Hello, my name is Eric Owens. I am the president of the American Distilling Institute. I am so honored to have you all here with me. I have a background in biology. I have worked in biotech and pharma as part of my professional career before transitioning to working at ADI. The science of distilling is just, it's infinitely fascinating to me. Uh, there's so much we don't necessarily know so at its most basic, what are we doing here? We, this is the scientific method. This is the, the background of all of science. We're, we're looking at things which we don't have answers to. We are creating a hypothesis of what a potential solution is to that. We devise tests, experiments to run, and then we determine, we analyze the results of those tests, and then we report, like, did it prove or disprove our hypothesis? It's really what we are looking for when we are going to determine what gets funded. A few years ago, we decided to create a nonprofit just specifically around that auction. The people donate money or donate goods people buy it and we have that money then to fund research. Yeah, the, the distilling research grant was created for that whole process. And out of that, we then said, hey, we need to create an advisory committee of people to determine whether we should be funding things or not. And so, so from our front page here, to, uh, research, excuse me, and the distilling research grant. There's sort of two parts of the grant. There's number one is the auction. The auction now runs, instead of having an actual auctioneer at the conference, we've moved it all online so that, you know, and we're, we run that auction concurrently with the conference. So this year, the conference will be August 23rd and 24th. We're from August 1st, to August 30th, we will open that auction up. And historically, it's been, uh, you know, our top level sponsors who donate goods and services to that. I've been trying to get, or last year I did reach out to some of the distillers. So if you can to to donate, you know, a bottle or two just to to help fund this thing, right? Yeah, so MGP has also generously donated money for this these goods. <clears throat> yes? Hey, it's Liz Rhodes. How are hey. you? I had a quick question. Yes, thanks. Uh so do the bottle donation, is there a cutoff or what um can you explain that? a little bit a uh, cutoff window uh um with the bottle donation or what's that yeah program? so thanks for the question yeah we've just been doing it where you know <laughs> shipping spirits is so fraught with difficulties in the united states basically we've just been saying hey you know like like whistle pig wanted to donate a bottle we'd do it we'd put it up there we'd sell it and then say but hey you have to go to the distillery and pick it up right we're not going to ship it it's, it has to be somebody who lives local to you who wants to bid on these things okay um so i was just mentioning it because we partner with speakeasy oh and that's um so I was just offering that up as, so that's why it kind of inquired. Um, that could be an, uh, an option. Um, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know everyone's program, but, um, that's something we do. So, uh, that could be, uh, anyway, just putting it out there. Great. Well, thank you so much for that. I took a note here and I will definitely follow up with you about that. Here on the website, uh, we have the research that's already been done. So you can go to them individually here. <clears throat> research, ancient stills. We're looking at some MMRS data. 
Uh, we have some very long-term projects that we helped to fund as well, which I'm still waiting on data from this, which is how oxygen enters and interacts with distillate. Uh, another MMRS. Uh, the sort of two funded research grants uh, that were within the last year is number one, uh, Brett Stegerwald just pre presented this at WDSC and he'll present this at our conference too, is the use of bacteria to increase organic acids in your fermentation. And then also there was a presentation about uh, using seawater in your fermentation. And that gets us to our advisory committee. So you can see on the website, these are the people who are part of our committee. And uh, you can go and look up them anytime. Uh, but we have, I think, two of them here with us currently. Yeah, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but uh, I'm a professor of chemical engineering at the University of Kentucky. And I'm with the, the Beam Institute there, which is a... Uh, a research and education organization within the University of Kentucky, really with a broad mission towards bourbon and American whiskey. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I enjoy, honestly, all research and inquiry in the space of distilled spirits. So uh, that's that's what gets me excited. That's what I, I spend my time doing. And, uh, yeah, happy to uh, chip in and, and help out with advising on, on these kinds of these kinds of things. And uh, yeah, if you have crazy questions, I'm always, always excited about learning more. Liz. Oh, thanks, Brad. Liz. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm actually tuning in from Cancun. I'm on holiday right now, but I love science so much <laughs> that I'm here. So, hey, y'all. Uh, I'm Liz Rhodes. I currently am head of whiskey development at Whistle Pig Whiskey. Uh, and also run um, a consulting company called Start Safe Consulting. Uh, I, um, my BS and MS are in food science and fermentation science and um, have my diploma distiller through the Institute of Brewing and Distilling. Uh, research scientist, uh, eight years at Diageo um, and have been helping people make booze in uh, all around the world. Uh, uh, for about 15 years now. So um happy yeah to answer any questions. I love uh as I mentioned, I'm here in Cancun, Mexico on holiday. Science, hell yes. <laughs> so happy to help any questions <laughs> that come along. <laughs> hey everyone. <laughs> yeah, so I'm my holiday sun sunny's on, right? <laughs> your unprofessional attire currently holy smokes no liz the you know she she brings the big energy she definitely you know these advisory committee meetings are full of uh you know more sort of uh scientific type personalities but anytime liz shows up it's just she raises the level thank you so much liz uh thank you good to be here <clears throat> So uh, I will go through the process and then I will open it up for questions. Uh, so we have here the request for a proposal up here at the top. I should move screens again. <clears throat> so it just basically, uh, I mean, you guys can go through and read these things here. What we want. There's an example on here. Uh, w w the things we're really looking for, submit a proposal. And again, you know, <clears throat> maybe this is a page we talk a little bit more about is like, what are we looking for? Number one, we are looking for research that will advance knowledge for micro distillers, right? There's a lot of scientific knowledge in this world, and especially around distilling and distilling processes, but a lot of that research is owned by the multinational distilling corporations who created that research. They've spent time and money on finding things out about how distillation, maturation, these 
maceration, uh, how these things work, but they don't necessarily want to share it for free. There are schools out there as well that are working on this, but, you know, we really, it's American Distilling Institute was created to promote craft distillers. So we want things that are on that scale, which will benefit a craft distiller, you know, operating today. Through my time in the distilling industry, there's things I hear from the blenders, you know, there's like these numbers out there that are like 50 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, maturation slows down or stops, right? So then we were talking about doing maturation in Hawaii, where it's constantly 70 to 83 degrees, it would seem to be a good thing in there. But like once again where does that number 50 degrees come from and is there scientific evidence to back that up you know that's like one of the things i would hope that people would propose to do research on in the future or you know there's a, another one of the sort of blender things out there in the world is like slow especially for like congener rich spirits is you know do you, when you're proofing down, do you proof down all at once? Do you do a slow proofing down? You know, I've heard that slow proofing increases the quality of the spirit. But once again, we don't necessarily have scientific research. We don't have data out there presented, which we can easily look to at, and like determine yes or no about these things are true. And so, yeah, I don't know if, Liz or Brad, do you, I mean, you guys sit on the committee. What, what are sort of the like things you, do you have any sort of signposts or things that you would say that we're look, you're looking for when you're looking at these proposals? I, I think you, you got a good outline here. Is it novel? This is one of the things like, is it something that we we've seen or, yeah, because because if, if it's not something that's new, um, yeah, it's hard to get excited about it. Um, and then, yeah, making sure it really applies to the the craft distilling industry. Um, those are the the things. And then and then is the experiment set up in a way that you're actually going to get an answer that will help other people out? Because um, I mean, you can just I mean, we could goof around with stuff all day and and ultimately not have something that is a scientific inclusion at the end. So is there a real clear question and a real clear way of answering that question? And and I think that's the fine. And, and again, if you're struggling with some of these things in terms of how to set up those questions and things like that, you're welcome to, yeah, reach out to us or, or reach, re, reach out to a local university and, and find, find partners that are really comfortable with, with diving into scientific questions and, and run from there. So I don't know, Liz, uh, you got thoughts there? Um, so, uh, pun intended, I'll piggyback on what you said. <laughs> um, uh, I think, uh, applicable, um, right. So I, I agree with, uh, the novelty, but uh, how is it going to be used and, uh, you know, utilized? Is it applicable back to the industry? Um, and if that's just novel to your program, that's great. But I think, um, any, uh, gleanings from the study uh we should you know should be shared to eric's point right it's a lot of um a lot of research hasn't done but it's been siloed and so if it's it should be applicable i think to a lot of different um folks and programs uh but also yeah being clear on the objective and the outcome, you know, uh, right. So back to the scientific method. Uh, however, I think the analysis is, is super important. Um, just from my experience, uh, I know Heinrich will have uh, a lot of opinions on this as well. I know Brad does. Um, but, uh, the analysis in which we're uh, gauging, uh, the experiment is just as important. Um, certainly done a lot of projects like with GCMS and it's, that's fine. Um, but sometimes if you analyze for whatever the standard, 
uh, 20 compounds, you're not getting the full picture. So uh, sometimes, uh, depending on right the type of study, uh, the simplest things are are sensories. So I know um, other folks on the DRG will advocate for sensories. So I think just again echoing, uh, being clear on what the objective is and what the you know hypotheses or what the outcome is, and making sure it's applicable, novel, and then uh, you know really understanding. Um, the type of analyses that is going to be able to actually, uh, you know, give us some some learnings at the end. Can I can I ask a question? Uh, yeah. Is it about what we're looking for, or is it specific to your project? Well, no, it's about what it's, it's about a, a essentially kind of a process because I'm yeah. I'm wondering right yeah. if, if I have an idea if, for this, but. But is it would it be worthwhile to just give the advisory committee a a short description and say this is kind of what we're thinking? Would would that be of interest? Is that uh, uh, you know because I'm not sure I know all the research or not. Would would I be able to do something and just get a first blush? Yeah, that might be something we're interested in, or no, that's already been done. Look at here. Uh, it, would that be possible? Yeah, so I, I have two points here. Number one is like back to like what we're looking for. And one of the things we constantly or for the past few years, we've been having people present is like, hey, I want to look at the differences in heritage corn varietals, right? And so like that is such a big idea. And it's like there's so many ways uh, it's we we keep getting this question over and over again and that's it's all it's like too big of a question really right and so actually you know talking with henrik like one of the things is like hey we don't even know we want data first on like what is the difference even in a single varietal right you have to map like a single varietal of something before then you can map it against other species of that varietal right so this is something we we keep getting over and over again but it's like and so back to like what you should do is uh, oh, I shouldn't go back. Uh, but so like I, I mentioned the front page on the front page of this, there's the advisory committee. So yeah, at this point in time, like Brad's here and he said, yes, you could submit that to me or, you know, like Liz is here too. Like if you wanted to reach out individually to anyone on the committee, I'm sure they would love, they're all geeks. They all love talking about science and thinking about it and so yeah, it, you could reach out to any one of them individually, or you can email me and I can make that introduction as well. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, Again. I may do that. Cause I don't want to spend a lot of time doing a proposal if it's just not something you're you're going to be interested in, right? So let's save ourselves some time. Yeah. Thank, fair, thank you. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Or even if there's like a short list and. I guess, so I also sit on the American Malting Barley Association Technical Committee, and you're, Eric, you're speaking about corn varietals, and we're going to full revamp of uh, trying to assess varietals, and um, it's, we assess it against current varietals, and it's sort of like the same thing, and I was like, well, if we're assessing it against current varietals, and what's the point of, like, what's the value add? So I think yeah, that's a that's a great idea. You know, so we're even looking at that and that committee. So, um, uh, yeah, it's uh, how can we progress together? So, yep, great idea. Yeah, and I'll just yeah openly invite Paul or anybody else that wants to to chat. Like, so my job with the Beam Institute is really trying to connect researchers with distillers. So. 90% of my job is talking to distillers who have ideas and researchers who have ideas and trying to really bring them together to, to pull together. And, and along those lines, I'm, I'm constantly listening to ideas. And if, and we can also sort of make that assessment on whether or not it makes sense for ADI to, to go in. So I'm, I'm always happy to listen to ideas, whether or not they're appropriate for ADI. Or not. Perfect. Thank you. I'd, I'd appreciate it. And I think I only have Eric's email I'm not sure I have everybody else's, but 
but I, I can certainly reach out to Eric and, and, Yeah, and and I think he there's can submit like it on. LinkedIn links or there, uh, I think there are some Okay. links off of that front page, but yeah, uh, go ahead, email me Okay. first and uh, I will definitely forward that on. Great. Thank, thank you so much. And then I'll move on to the actual like submit a proposal and, uh, you know, re this is a lot of the same stuff we just talked about, but email name, email. Why is email on there twice? Oh, like what you do, list of distilling experience. Like this is where it gets to like research experience. Uh, your background, they want to know like, do you, are you an academic or not? I mean, it, you don't necessarily have to have research experience, but in like Paul, if you're wondering, like we might say, you know, link you up with somebody who does have more an academic or somebody else who does have more of a, that scientific background and knows the process to, to, to get this off the ground. But yeah. Uh, and really when th this form here is, you know, we get together with the advisory committee and we, there, there's like 10 questions on here and really like, just look, look at them, fill them out as best you can. If there is, information missing or if you're not answering the question then you know you are definitely less likely to get funding but also too is you know we have gone through and scored we i say we the royal we the i i maybe i should just insert this here is like i don't vote on anything i don't you know do uh, i'm not involved with that process i'm just involved with sort of the running of the distilling research grant that, you know, we have had people go through here who do have good ideas and maybe it wasn't a fully formed idea on here, or there was some sort of information that was missing, but we have, you know, we gotten back to them and said, Hey, you know, we like your proposal, but X, Y, and Z is missing. And then they, they resubmit, they, they look over those areas and then resubmit it to us. And then we have, done funding so it doesn't have to be perfect the the first time out the gate but this is all just really standard stuff in in submitting proposals for funding in academia whether you're doing it for distilling research or for economics research but basically an abstract background uh materials and methods budget uh observations and significance and reference and so i don't know if there's anything else that needs to be said about these areas question mark got it so that's really uh all i had to present uh you know we do is there any does anyone have any questions Can you remind me what the time frame is? So you, you're you're raising the money for this in August, and and then the uh, the um, when when would you expect the grants to be? Uh, and and I ask this because it may be a little early for for us to do this, right? We yeah, might have to so next year. So that's we actually uh, back, I believe, in like February or March, I opened up the request for proposal again. So those two things are, they're both part of the actions here, but they're not linked, right? We do actually currently okay. have some money in the bank, which, you know, so I opened up the request for proposal at Q, Q1 of this year, but nobody sort of made it through, right? We had four or five, we didn't have a lot of proposals. And so nobody made it through. And so that's why I'm here doing this again is, you know, most likely I will open it up at the same time, that August time frame, but we will again open up the request for proposals because we we have money to fund research. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much for attending. Uh, you can reach me at, at erico at distilling.com. Uh, we have our conference coming up in August. You can 
If you were there, you will get to meet Brett Steerwalt from Lion Distilling. I had the pleasure of meeting him in Edinburgh. He is very fun uh, and he's very passionate about rum and rum distillation and pineapple rum. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you there.